All right, I just looked and it's 4.28. I was like, I wonder what time it is because I was sitting here thinking about like what I wanted to talk about. And I was like, oh, because I don't, I don't like it when I'm scattered. I kind of like to have an idea what I'm going to talk about. And, um, and I was sitting there thinking about like when I woke up, I was just laying there and laying there and laying there. And then I got up and it was like 3.45. And, um, but it seems like I slept really good. I don't know. It seems like I did. And then, um, I was just thinking about, um, just all this stuff, man. And how it's so hard to explain what I see. It's so, uh, is it the, I could figure out how to explain it. Because it's just like people just don't see. But everybody's going to see when they're supposed to see. I got to just let go of that. Like, I've got the magic words. I can somehow get people to see what they can't see. It's, you know, it's an independent journey. And so many people just block themselves. But somebody was just um, sharing. Because I've talked about so much about the self-help books. How important I believe they are on your journey. Like, like you know, like my daughter who just went through this other loss. And so I was telling her she should read the near-death experience books because it will make her feel better, especially in regards to, you know, his what happened when he passed, how it's like haunting. And, but, you know, as somebody who understands like about soul stuff, you know, knowing that the soul's not in there, the soul doesn't go through that experience. The soul stands there and watches it. You go read a bunch of those books, you'll see. They stand and watch it. They don't go through it. That is part of the storyline for us, of the ending of the storyline. You know, and some of them are dramatic and they're supposed to hit us in a certain way. So, um, you know, and I told her to read the NDE books and she found this book called Afterlife. I think I could have had another word or whatever, but she was reading the um, the sample and she was really liking it. And so I think she's going to read some more and see that could totally get her interested in, you know, follow reading more spiritual books. Because I said, you know, you read this stuff, it's going to help you feel better. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel like you understand things more. And um, in, in the healing journey, because I was reading the self-help books, look, I, you know, I, I, people thought I was so weird. Because I was young. I was really young. And I was reading self-help books all the time. And then even, um, you know, when I would get, you know, around people who read a lot, you know, they would look down on me. Like, that's not really reading books. <laughs> reading books, you know, works of fiction by the greats. Or, you know, that's the real reading. This... That's garbage reading. I don't know what you're doing. You wake up. But I was always treated like that. Like, like, uh, uh, like the downstairs help <laughs> by people. And it, you know, it just became so much a part of my thing. It wasn't like I was like, and my thing is so weird. It's just so weird. Because that, like, how much attention I would get on the physical side, but then there's the part of me that was the internal side. It was like, you know, wanted nothing to do with that side of me, the real side of me. So it was just, it was a weird experience to go through, you know, and always being called weird. It's like, okay, so I'm weird that you still want to have sex with this little vessel right here, huh? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I had to, I had to learn about me. I had to realize, you know, nobody else is going to protect you. You're the one who needs to protect you. But I read um, so many self-help books all the time. I've used self-help books all throughout my um, life. But I definitely started. I was like, I don't know, I'm 19, 20 years old. <laughs> when everybody else is just out doing lines of cocaine. And, you know, I'm like, well... 
I want to feel better. So, um, I want to understand things on a deeper level. I want to try and understand the dynamics of what's going on here. I want to try and figure out the patterns so I can break them. You know, I just was coming at life so different. It's just so weird to realize, you know, how weird you really were. <laughs> no wonder I was coming such a weirdo. Um, but this, um, somebody in the thing was saying, um, emotional freedom is when that they are just, they finished reading it, but it, it, through their healing journey, it helped them so much to be able to put pieces together and stuff. And so, uh, you know, there's so many books out there for whatever you're going through, you know, and don't feel like you're a weirdo because you want to feel better in the world or you want to feel better in life or you want to try and understand what's going on and what, what's your purpose and stuff. Don't feel like you're some sort of a weirdo because people think that that's strange behavior. <laughs> like, it just, um, you know, I, like I'm telling you, reading for me, uh, being in these certain patterns throughout my uh, relationships, the gaslighting book helped me so much. And it was, um, you know, just the recognition of seeing my own pattern because the people need the other person to play the game. You can't, they, they can't play the game without the other player. So once you see the part you're playing, you know, your role, you can change it. Once you have awareness of it, you don't, you're not stuck in your patterns. You're not stuck in your behaviors. You can see it and you can break the patterns. You can break the behaviors. And don't forget, you got to be, you know, not too hard on yourself. Always, because that's another thing people like to do is just like, oh, you stupid idiot. You should have done it perfect the first time. God, you're an idiot. God, you're so disgusting. No one, nobody likes you. It's like people are so mean to themselves. And now, like, the way people just go out and say it, like, teenagers, just kill yourself. You're so disgusting. Nobody wants to be around you. I'm going to go kill myself while we're at it. It's just like, oh, my God, what is wrong with you guys? Stop talking like that. And it's like, yeah, our language has very much devolved. <laughs> like, we don't need a lot of words. Just make sure there's kill, hate, uh, you know, it's like, fuck. Um, but you know, we've got to want more and do better and we've got to be role models. I just saw this video, it's such a beautiful story. Um, because this mom, which I really liked that she told the story, she didn't put her child on there and make her child uncomfortably talk to whoever's listening, you know, but the mom told the story and she was saying that her daughter didn't get invited to a birthday party, but the person having this eight year old. And the person having it made sure, you know, she knew she's on the maybe list. You know, well, maybe we got to see how it goes. Uh, right now, we got a pretty good party going. So, we'll let you know. Somebody else isn't going to come. Well, you know, we'll go through the maybes and we'll decide. And so, the little girl was like crushed, you know. She didn't get invited to the birthday party. And then to know like, well, maybe I got to go. So, she went home and you know, told her mom. And uh, her mom said, so what do you want to do? And she said, well, I guess I'm just going to wait and see and get to go to the birthday party. And um, so the mom said, well, you know, this has happened to me twice recently where somebody made sure that I knew that I was left out of something that other people were invited to. And, um, you know, it bothered me. But, you know, I, I you have to be who you're going to be all the time. Don't be... Um, you know, who these people are. And you can't please everybody. You can't, you know, you can't be everybody's favorite. You can't be everybody's cup of tea. We all have different, you know, and don't ever feel bad that you're not, you know, that you, you're, and then if you are unique uh, in any way, that even puts more, they all just tend to want to be with the, you know, the same color sheep or whatever, you know, something that makes them comfortable. If you're uh, odd in any way, you know, you make people uncomfortable, they're not going to want you around because, you know, people don't want to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> people just want to feel good all the time. Any way that they can. Do drugs, whatever. Feel good, feel good. Don't experience the world. Don't experience life. And um, but she was telling her, you know, about you won't be a race cup of tea and whatever. Um, well, I mean, I'm kind of putting in my, in my own words. She didn't talk just like me. But so she said that, um, uh, you know, that 
I don't remember what the whole thing, you know, and then she said, because she had told the daughter about the being left out and, you know, the whole little thing. And then her daughter, so then she said, well, so what do you want to do? And she said, well, I think what I'm going to do is just draw her a picture and then I'm going to just tell her have a nice birthday party. And her mom said, that's so smart. That is really, really good. That's such a nice thing. And then when she was walking off, she said, and also for my birthday party, I'm going to invite everybody, every single person, even her, because I don't want anybody to feel left out. And she said, because we've got to look out for, oh, it was a cute little slogan. I was like, oh, we got to get the slogan going. It's so cute. We got to, um, ah, oh, maybe it'll come to me. Uh, it is always so frustrating when I, sometimes I'm trying to remember something. I have to go in and look at it a zillion times. Um, and it's just, it's, uh, it's frustrating. <sighs> As I, I used to have such a good memory. Um, but it was look out for the, look out for the left out. That's what it is. Look out for the left out. I was like, that is so cute. Look out for the left out because it is so true. And we all do need to look out for each other. And um, I saw another video. I only saw a couple of videos this morning. But um, some of them were just that same redundant. Like these things start going and they start saying stuff like these politicians, the news, the government, all that kind of those videos that keep popping up. And it's like I can't even, it, it's just like it's so redundant. It's like, oh my God, this is, um, you know, I mean, fuck, God damn, the Fetterman, uh, you know, it's obviously not the same guy, Jesus Christ, I mean, they just get so much more obvious all the time, it's like, oh my God, I'm surprised they don't have an old white woman out saying she's Oprah, it's just so ridiculous, and, um, and he's walking in shorts, not professional at all, they ask him a question, and he makes a big old scene. Then fucking old Schumer, fucking dig it. He's, uh, uh, oh, you know, we're not going to do a witch hunt on this. Like, this is just ridiculous. You know, we're not going to go after Joe. Like, we got bigger fish to fry. We're going after Trump. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy is such a, he's so absurd. I can't wait to see these people go down. My mom, like, messaged me yesterday. She was all burnt or bummed out. Oh, Nancy's running again. Um, this is all a show, but, uh, you know, the people who watch this stuff is, uh, they're hanging on every single little thing and that, you know, I can get her a lot of times to just walk away and to be like, but she, she is tangled in there. It's like everything they're doing, this is real. It's like, mom, it's not real. It's not real. No matter how many times she's still that part of her, she's very stuck in that, like, it really gets to her and stuff. It's like, this is all a show. Yeah, it's aggravating. And, and you watch, and they're sitting there acting like you're an idiot doing this shit. Yeah, you're going to feel aggravated. Stop watching. It's just, it's, and then when I see it, it's just like, I feel like it's just an echo chamber of the same shit. It's like, come on. Let's fucking get the show on the road. Fuck. Um, I, I swear to God. Uh, there's just no fucking way. We're not going to drag out Joe fucking impeach. Like, God damn. How many impeachments are we going to go through? Didn't we go through like two for Trump or something? Like, this is just so absurd. Just fucking... Just let Nancy have a minute with him. You know, she has that stuff on her hand before. She was going to use it. Just have her use it on him. Like, he's not even real. Like, it's an actor. I'm always trying to look look at the body and the hands and be like their mannerisms and stuff and try and figure out like which actor is in there. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard though because I think there's several. I don't think it's just one playing them. I think that I have a few. And, uh, and that I think is to just kind of even add more to the like weirdness of the fella. <laughs> like he's just out there. <laughs> and he's several people. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, cause I was going to talk. So there was somebody, so in Dallas, that I guess the, I don't know if it's back on, but in the storm, the power went out or something or something. I don't know. The, somebody was videotaping it 
and um, they caught another one of those fucking direct energy. <laughs> like, you just see the, the fucking thing come. And this one wasn't coming from up. Like, it wasn't coming from a satellite. It was, it seemed like it was coming from something across. Like it seemed like it was shooting from over there. And so you see the beam of light shoot across and then you see it hit into something, supposedly a transformer and explode. But you see the thing go exactly. I, I'm, I'm sure there's, I mean, they can just be popping up fires and stuff all over the place with those things. Like they just sit there with the little things and like making us jump or something. Like... Like they're kind of um, like in the Western when the, the guy's out there and they're shooting at his feet and he's dancing. That's kind of like what they're doing to us. They're just shooting at us to make us dance, to make us squirm. It is um, like, I, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they intended to burn up all of Dallas. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Um, I think... I think today's Friday, and I think the hurricane is supposed to hit up east or on the uh, north tomorrow. But there should be already being hit all on the other parts to see, like, if those places were devastated. I don't fucking know. I don't. See, I haven't seen any of those videos. And um, but I saw, uh, and I've seen this for a few days, and it just seems to get weirder and weirder is this Vegas thing, the hackers. Yeah, it's the hackers. Well, the hackers work for the criminals who run those places who are all a bunch of fucking organized uh, goddamn uh, uh, gangsters. So it's just a big giant gangster enterprise. So the fucking hackers, you know, work for the same organization. What do you think is a turf war? We got two criminal organizations out here competing? No, oh, it's the same motherfuckers. And I swear to God, it's a way to fucking get money. It's just uh, because, like, the Federal Reserve and stuff is closed. Uh, they've been drying up all of their sources of income. Like, rest in the Rockefeller fella, he went down, like, a while ago. I think they put him in the news a year and a half or two years ago that he died. And, um... Who, uh, something else was just popping in my head. Oh, Soros, yeah, because they had said that they had done something to his accounts. That Buffett guy, yeah, I used to think he was like maybe a decent, no. He fucking funds some shit, man. That guy's a piece too. I don't know, something just happens to some of these people. You get a certain amount of money and you just have to hold on to it and they become like fucking crazy. It's like the money becomes more important than anything else. Uh, like, I hold on to the money. And maybe some of them are so fear of, like, not having their money because they know what the the life of the chattel is. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be back there with them. <laughs> so, who knows? Like, it's also fucking distorted. Everybody's just so, um, um, you know, uh, it's, they just don't think right. Nobody, it, it just, it's like so, I, I just can't even believe what this fucking, a bony thing, like, somebody went in to my thing yesterday, and I don't know, it, it could have been a fake person, when they go in so hard about some of this shit, like, one guy in my comments, he went in and started telling me, um, something about, he, he was a sheep dog, I was a sheep, he, um, I just don't want to see, I don't know what the fuck he's trying to say. Uh, I guess because some of these people think that we need to go in and um, aggressively go battle. Like we're, we're having the last stand. They're like, we're going to battle them. We're going to take the corporations over. We're going to make them be uh, ethical. We're going to force, uh, we're going to force them to do what we want them to do. All these uh, corporations and shit is like, what? that is what I mean. Like, what? What the fuck? So you guys think that you can go in and battle these people for this world 
and keep this world going. Like this world, we'll just, we'll just switch it out. We'll all just take it over. And then we'll just, I don't know. We'll give the politicians a second chance. I mean, ugh. Everybody else is busy. They got to get to work. They don't have time to do it. So, look, who else are we going to do? You know, but we're going to watch. Uh, we'll watch until we get tired. And then when they start that new mini series, like, look, I got to watch that mini series. I don't have time to watch what the government's doing. Look, they got that good show coming out. Oh, that one good movie's going to be released too. Look, there's no time to watch over them, really. I guess we better just trust them. It's like, I don't understand what. We're just going to go around in circles or something. Y'all think we're going to battle these people, take over their world for them, and then we're going to let them know. Like, I mean, this person's like, well, you know, what we got to do is, uh, what is that they were going to do the other week? Uh, <sighs> the picket, not the picketing, the, the other thing that they do. With the, um, when they all stop working, they want this negotiation and all that stuff. Well, that's what we really need to do. Oh my God. Are you fucking kidding me? So all these corporations, all these different CEOs and stuff like that, all these different human resources. But if we all just don't go to work and we all just make sure that they know we just won't go to work. Unless you tell us what we want. Well, okay, so uh, we have everybody going to write out their demands. Like, I, 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 I mean, this is just, it's wacky. It's just, it's the wackiest approach. It's the wackiest shit. Like, what are you trying to change here? What are you trying to hold on to? Fuck. When I was saying this shit, like, fuck, I swear to God, I was in my very first videos. And I said that this world is going to be ripped out of people's hands. And as long as you're holding on, as tighter you hold on, the more it's going to hurt. And like, uh, like I could see it, but man, watching it like this, like I totally get why there's this replay that we go out and we go into experience because just when I get shown things in my head and I could see things, it's different going through the experience watching it play out, watching how these people hold on. What are you holding on to? What is it you think you can change? Like you're, you have to be willing to let it all go. You've got to be able to walk away from this place. And the people, it's like, they just want these people to make new rules for them. It's like, no. This is their habitat. This is their world. They created it. Yeah, we were all birthed in and they told us this was all there was. There was nothing else. And we had to follow these rules, this money, this birth certificate, all this nonsense. The way they went in and just, you know, brutalized like what they're doing in Hawaii with the tribes and stuff to force them. They go in labs, make these people like me who have no... You know, we have, we're white people, a white person from America. What is your call? I'm just a white person from America. That's, that's what I am. So, uh, you know, their, their creation is, um, that is where you have to say, this isn't, this isn't how I want to live. You know, I'm going to be a white person. I'm going to go figure out more of what I am. Not just this white American. America has no fucking substance. America is fucking built on goddamn lip gloss and condoms. It's like fucking Nastyville. It's, it's like people have no substance. And they just, and, and people want to hold on to this. It's like a fucking sickness is like a disease. It's like you go to the doctor and they tell you you have a hundred pound tumor in your stomach and you say, leave it in, please. I like it. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> what would I do without it? I was like, what the fuck? God damn. Well, you know, if you've spent your life always looking at it like you can have better, you can do better. 
life can be better, then you approach it differently. And so, yeah, to me, it's like, yeah, the system there is like, you know, you're going on vacation and you got all the hotels there. You're going to pick which one you're going to go to. This isn't the one I'm going. I'll go to the one. I don't give a fuck if we have to camp out back. I'm not going to go to this one. This is the one where, you know, you're on vacation in Vegas spending some money and they're going to close the hotel down and you can't get in your room because the hackers, it's those damn hackers, and the hackers have made a ransom. <laughs> just this is so it's so ridiculous and it's so absurd and I cannot believe it, there, there's actual people who don't see this as just a big old fucking show like what the fuck and so they paid them 30 or the the hackers demand 30 million but they gave them 15 million so far but they're losing 17 million a day because people can't get in their rooms and they can't everything's off or whatever <laughs> Uh, I don't know. This whole thing is so, it's so bizarre. I knew shit would go in Vegas, so it's so built on such a. I mean, even Hawaii to know like the tunnel, the, the the tunnel, this whole thing down there, and their hot dog stands, and how much they like. Like, there's so much dark energy. Like, there's no telling that it was what has gone down in those tunnels, down there, you know, and uh, the same in Vegas. Like, even in the Hostel movies, the last one, number three, I think it was. Wasn't it? The first one was so fucking dramatic. Soon as I saw it, I was like, this is real. This is real, you guys. This isn't a movie. This is fucking real. This really goes on. And um, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like, I'm serious. <laughs> don't don't take a drink from a stranger in a hostel. Don't fucking go and befriend people just because you're traveling and they're trying to be friends with you. Be a little weary. And um, uh, the second one, I can't remember. I don't think it was the second one. I think it was the third one, but it was Vegas. <laughs> I'm sure. And we got, that's a big old fishing pond, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, and then they have the Hoover Dam dry up, and they got all these fucking bodies out there in that thing. I'm sure that was like, but, um, you know, people go there, they're drunk, people go missing. People go there just to, because they got nowhere else to go. They go to these places like New York, Vegas, where it's just awake all night. But, you know, awake all night it doesn't mean that the people who are usually in the dark, you know, they, they're they there in the light. There's so many of them, too. It's just like, just the roaches. Like, you turn the lights on and then just the roaches are just like, fuck it. And just keep on going. And we'll even hide. That's what, you know, some of these places are like with some of these people. Yeah, you know. Like, they're not going just out to, like, well, I mean, fucking Chicago, Detroit is bad. Like, there's a lot of inner city places. Yeah, you can go, fuck, it is dangerous. Just that I have, I was not, I've seen more than one of these gangster, you know, thug kind of people that are, like, I don't know, I think probably in the inner city, especially if you're a certain color, you probably have to kind of put on the armor. You know, you gotta kind of, if you're not very thug, then you probably just get consumed. So some of them, I think it puts on a persona, you know, don't fucking mess with me, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> but um, that the um, the retrieval, of the, you know, the heart, kidney, all the organ things, you know, that they're, especially the kidney one. And that's what just trips me out. It's like, fuck, they use a lot of goddamn kidneys. But there is more and more with this fucking food thing. Fuck, there is way more in the, um, oh yeah, because somebody was just saying about the, because the, the these gangster people, they said that they uh, can get those things out fucking in 30 seconds. 
They grab you. I don't know what the hell they do. They'll walk up behind you on the street. Uh, the one girl, she said that they all put out, like, they look online, these rich people. You know, they're just cataloging. They're Tinder swiping all day long online. And then they find somebody that they want. So, I don't know. They're traveling to Chicago. Like, they're, maybe that's a hot spot. And then they look online and they're like, oh, yeah, well, this person. Go find me this one. I'll give you a huge amount of money. And so, they go out and hunt them down. And then they, I don't know if they walk up and inject them real quick or what they do. Seems dangerous. Whatever the fuck it is. It's, I'm sure it's fast because these people, these, these other thuggy kind of people brag about how efficient, how fast they can just get in there, whip them out and, you know, and I don't even know if they even bother with bags of ice in the tub or if they just leave you bleeding on the, on the curb. I'm not sure. Or, you know, maybe some of them, they just give them the whole package. Just eat it all. Whatever. I don't know. It's a bunch of fucking weird shit. And, um, and there was another thing that was coming. I almost started to say, because it was, uh, the, the hostel was Chicago, but there was something else about what I was about to say, and then I go, well, let me finish that, and I'll go back to the other thing. Um, what is it? <sighs> Storms, the fucking politics, the politics thing is so annoying. I cannot, and that person coming in and telling and tell me, oh, well, you have to tell people that they need to vote, but this is so important. People need to see. We've got to, people have really got to get out there and do it, because not enough people have been doing it. That's the problem. It's like, What? the fuck these people are placed they're not goddamn persons voted in are you kidding me you know i'm gonna go participate in that goddamn show huh no no thank you hey you go do you and this person was i was like you know i'm the wrong person to talk to about this i'm anti that i'm anti-government i'm like trying to get people to realize we don't need government I, they put themselves in charge of us we've got to pull free and and I'm not anything about holding on to anything from the past. Fuck that. It's like fucking dirty. It's like, yeah, it's like wanting to keep your gallstones or something. Like, fuck that shit. Like, I don't want anything to do with it. I want uh, freedom. I want to start over. I want to see what we can do. I want to see what we can create. Uh, I don't want anything from this fucking old shit. And, um, oh yeah, because it's the burgers do not fucking go get any of those goddamn fucking uh, dollar. No, not even a dollar. They're going to be a goddamn penny. They're giving you something for a penny. Is They're giving it away for free. They want you to take that shit. It is. And there's no telling. There is no motherfucking telling what's in it. I just saw a girl talking. She was t said I was talking to a lab tech. And she said, um, she so she asked her, you know, what's the deal in the labs? Like, are you seeing a lot of... Um, clots and stuff and the girl said well now we have a whole new position clot cleaner and uh, so they have to go sit with the blood they have an area they have to open each tube apparently pull the clots out so that it can run in the machine because they can't run in the machines i used to work in a lab and so you can't run in the machines it's got to have so it's like um you know it's like I think you know what it's like. Uh, so they can't put it through the machines because they clog up the machines. So they have to sit there and take them all out. And so she said, yeah, there's tons. They have a whole position now. They have to take them out to get them to run in the machines. And she said, and they're not telling anybody that that doesn't go into the report that they have that. So tons of people have them and don't even know. And, you know, and I don't know uh, you know, fuck, like, this is new stuff that they're doing, so it's like, I don't, I don't know, I would think there's got to be herbs and stuff like that, you know, ones to keep your blood clean, one to oxygenate your blood, all those kinds of things, like, fuck, I don't, God, I don't, I don't it's like, I would just want these med beds to hurry up, and calm because the um 
it's just, God, this is just so much. And people, you know, are going around just feeling sick. And, oh, it just I, it stresses me out, obviously, because I've got a lot of family members who have them. And there's still somebody is, I don't know if it's one somebody, if it's a whole group. I don't know if it's the love and light people. I don't fucking know. It's a, uh, saying that um, whatever is about to happen, there's going to be like a billion fucking of that that is just going to go. <clears throat> like whatever they're going to turn on or something. Somebody got footage the other day of a, a like a has like a truck like a hazmat truck or something driving down their thing only the sticker said zombie response team so i don't know if somebody has put a whole bunch of money into buying some kind of tank truck car thing and put a thing on like that for it just for fun or if they're just openly have got their zombie response team now out in some neighborhoods. If I see a zombie response team in my neighborhood, I'm going to for sure think we're about to get hit with some shit that is going to make some zombies. So, and the penny burgers all over the place, like, no telling what the fuck is in that. And there will be people, I uh, guess apparently they were, there's um, pop-up shops now. And um, people are lining up. Got to get it while it's free, especially because the next the next group's gonna be one hundred and fifty dollars. Like, maybe you should probably just not take anymore. They're probably just gonna keep going up. Just kind of like what I keep saying about what they want to get all these kids on these hormones. Uh, these hormones, what thousand dollars now? How much do you think they're gonna be when they got them? They they they're trapped on them. That's their whole thing. Everything is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. Everything's a fucking trap. And the people just keep on walking into the traps. It's like they want to be trapped. They want to be contained. They want to be controlled. Well, I don't. I don't want to be contained. I don't want to be controlled. And I don't need, you know, I don't need fucking Vegas to, you know, vacation spot. I don't need any of this shit, you know. To me, it even is like, God damn, life is so different than what people think or need it to be. Finding your own joy, your own happiness is so different for me than what, it, you know, it's like people need to have their car. They need to have their job. They need to have this. They need to have that or they can't be happy. It's like, I I just, I'm, I, it's just, it's got to be that part of like the DNA and stuff. Like, to me, you know, I need my tribe. That's what I need. I just need my tribe. You know, I would be willing to go around with my tribe as nomads. You know, carry my tent, go from place. I don't need, you know, I don't need stuff. I guess I need a tent. I need a tent to sleep in. I don't want to sleep outside with the bugs. But, you know, but if I didn't have a tent, would I fall apart? Would I be unhappy? Would I just spend all my time crying? And be like, life sucks, life sucks. I can't believe I don't have a tent. No. I would just go out and try and figure out how to make some other kind of shelter. So it's just it's like a fucking totally different approach to life. So, yeah, to me, it's like, and even if I weren't to find my tribe, even if I were just to go out there, it would be more living to me to go out and just walk around the world just, just take off walking and go and just go and experience life more than what their stuff that they offer like what do they offer that is the big pull to people like I don't get is it so much that you just feel so trapped like there's no other choice do you really feel like you, you know without having a big fancy house and two cars and a job and all this retirement and all the stuff that they've tried to trap you in with, without that stuff, you think like life is, you know, it's pointless. I mean, you got people out here, you know, using the old filter. They think like, well, fuck, I might be too ugly. I just, you know, life's not going to be worth it if I'm not attractive enough. Like, so what, what are you telling everybody who's ever become disabled? Well, fuck, you should have just gave up. Man, got that brain injury. You should have just fuck, fuck it. 
gave up. I'm sent in a nursing home and just let yourself deteriorate and die. You know, all these different people who've gotten in car wrecks, who are in wheelchairs right now, as everything is like way, way more. I can't even believe how many people I've met in person who got brain injuries. Yeah, you know, how many people, there's so many people are becoming disabled right now. People are losing everything. People are becoming disabled. People are losing important people to them. It's all about this loss. And what do you do with it? How, how do you handle it? What do you feel? What does it do to you? And, and it is, you know, and, and then it is your, also your opportunity, your experience for you to expand, for you to realize and to see, you know, to, to recognize like, you know, I've lost everything. I've lost everyone. I've got nothing. You know, do I just crawl up and die? Do I just give up? You know, is that, is that, you know, or do you just try and figure out, okay, well, I've got nothing, you know, lost all that, but you know, now where do I go? Where do I go from here? What is it I want? Where is it that I want to go to? What is that I want from life? What do I want to do with my life? What do I want to do with my time? I've got nothing burdening me now. And it is, um, you know, it's just, it's a new journey. And you'll always get more stuff, more people, more things. Those things will always come. You know, uh, just because, in you know, even when... Um, they wiped all my pictures off for all those pictures. You know, it was very hard, but I'll tell you what, now when I go out and I'm like at family things at birthdays and stuff like that, I don't ever film it anymore. Now I just, um, I, I get videos sent to me. I've got lots of videos sent to me. My thing is getting full again. Um, you know, with the babies and whatnot. Oh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the one started walking. <laughs> He's 10 months old. He's cute. He's so cute. They're both so cute. Um, and it's so different how these little boys are just a little, you know, they're, it's different because we were such a girl family. I had one grandson, but he was always like, to have two of them at the same time, it's just a little different. And, uh, you know, I mean, probably the one, he was so surrounded by girls, but this is two of them, I don't know. They're very, and one of them is all, a bunch of boys in their family. So, um, it, it, they're just so... So different than girls, babies. It's just, it's cute. Um, but what was I going to say? <sighs> um, yeah, I have no idea what I was talking about. Um, but the whole thing is, because they'll like show me these things and I can see, but it's like, I don't know how to explain is like I can see how people are like stuck and I can see like but I don't see how you get unstuck like everybody's got to figure out how to unstick themselves like what is them is holding on like what are you holding on to what ideas what concepts what paradigms what beliefs about yourself are you holding on to because it's all based on this false fake world that they created to try and you know contain us and um I have a bunch of pictures like going fast with the um the 1800s is it seems like it was something like in the later 1800s who knows what happened before that you know it's so weird like <coughs> Were there giants just that short time ago? Like, did the, um, did they release a sickness? And you remember when I talked about, like, a long while ago, I talked about that they were targeting certain things. Like, it with this, they, could tar they were targeting certain groups of people. They figured out, like, a certain protein or something that certain groups of people, like, um, like tons of Asian men, were targeted like there was definite target and um i just heard somebody or some 
doctor or something. I don't know what the... And they were talking about these things. Only I think it was talking about the one, the ones they give us from the beginning. That those ones were targeting certain people too. Those ones were targeting the darker skinned people. That to um, for a lot of different things. So they've always been out to get those people, the the people, the tribe people. You know, to me, it's like the natural people. They've always been out to get them. And so they put stuff in there to make them have like, I don't know, uh, something for sterilizing them. But that is how good they are with this targeting things. Like, like I know I'm not crazy about this, like uh, this orphan train thing, these cabbage patch babies, the reason why we're just white Americans. I mean, even the fucking... Um, darker skinned people they give them the well you're african-american they give them that culture even though it's the wrong one they still try and give them something to hang on to but then it gives them the whole storyline of yeah you were sold by your own people you're just garbage people you were stolen and you were you know you come from this horrible ancestry and stuff and then um and then people start looking up and seeing like no our families were well off we were from the Caribbean. We had, you know, royalty, like all sorts of stuff. But, you know, they went in just like, you know, what they did to the Hawaiian king and queen. And they don't give a fuck. The same thing to the ones in the uh, Caribbean or Caribbean or however you want to say it. That they, um, you know, just killed them and took the people and took their stuff, took their things, turned them into slaves. And, you know, and, uh, even when I was watching that show, um, what was that called? It's on Netflix. Br um, br uh, what the fuck? And I think it's the same writer. Is it the same one? Or is she writing the show? Because I swear to God, it was that same fucking girl from Grey's Anatomy. She's like an Oprah to me. Because she always in her shows, she always has these big statements, you know, oh, they say exactly. And those things are direct our, direct our thinking and they do it in such a, oh, it's so important. She does a lot of that in her shows. I can't think, of, but it seems like it's called like Bridgeport or something, but it's like a time kind of piece, a time period kind of show. But in the show, it, it kept saying, being like, well, this isn't historically factual, where they keep having these, like, dark-skinned kings and queens and stuff and being rich people. But then when you start realizing, oh, well, yeah, that was a part of the history. And then they fucking killed them and took over. So, yeah, there was, you know, darker-skinned uh, kings and queens and stuff. But they just went in and you know, wiped them out and took their lands because, I don't know, the royal people of Europe had weapons. Like, I don't know if, um, cause it seems like that was the big thing was the guns is why they could wipe out so many people. Because yeah, a lot of other people used, I don't know, more different kind of weapons. You know, like the arrows, the things, um, what are those spears arrows poison darts and shit like that so i don't know that but anyways they went in and just wiped out all these people but i was like that is weird now to think about that show that for it to be out because before i kept being like God, why would they put a show that was so historically wrong why would they do that and then um and then i I'd, I'd asked somebody and they said well, the writer wanted it to be like, well, what if, you know, in this fantasy, if we could all get along like this, if the kings and queens of all, uh, but then, to, you know, realize, oh, so the, they were there, but then these people just wiped them all out so that they could control them. And, you know, it's it's just, God, it's so evil. Like, I don't, I just don't get why anybody wants to hold on to this place. Um, but it seems 
some, I, I don't have any idea what the 1800s would have been like. Because it seems like they had these like huge, fantastic buildings. But there's people who are sharing footage saying, this is a movie. This is no way is this just like regular people walking around. This is weird looking. And it does. It looks weird. It looks too perfect, too set. And so, like, fuck. That's weird. Just that's weird. And then all of a sudden, they have all these fires, which they were already, you know, taking all these tribe people. Like, I wonder when the, all those, like, the ones, like, that whole school that was found in Canada when they dug up all those. Like, what year was that supposed to be? They put them, like, the early 1900s. So, they were still getting the, the tribes and doing all that stuff. So, because in Chicago fire, that was like 1875 or something when they destroyed all that. So was it still more like out on the West Coast? Like when you start going out through the Midwest and the West Coast, was there still a lot of tribes out there? And so they were still having to go out and take them and, and kill them? And move them? Like, when did they start all these reservations and stuff? But, so, when they started burning down these big cities, because there's a big thing about San Francisco, too. Because uh, there's weird shit. There's a lot of weird shit. Where people say, there's no people to build these buildings. Like, where'd these buildings all come from? Uh, because of this, this whole weird thing that they had. But it seems like... They wiped a lot of places out at the late 1800s and then started over. And it was something with the lab kids, uh, like the patch cat, the pa cabbage patch kids, the orphan trains, all of that stuff, and putting them all out there. And then um, I guess uh, they started taking tribes and killing them in schools confirmation saying that they were going to uh, educate them you know uh, but it's been the same like with the mountain people because those mountain people i think were all up in there before um you know they came over and discovered america uh, they didn't just discover america they went in and just took it away from the people who were already living there and then took it and made it their own. And everything about it is a lie. Our taxes were still going back to king and queen. We never won anything. We didn't win any of these wars. It was all a game. You know, just like the the Yahtzees. They just came over here and started running our lab, science labs. And then we wonder, why are we being tested on? Hmm, I wonder. Uh, so, it's all just been lies the whole time. I just, I don't, I mean, even the fact of the Bill of Rights and all of that stuff, like, like you want to participate in their culture, in their society, in their habitat, then it has rules. And they try to force their rules on other people. And back then, you know, they would just do it. I mean, they're doing it still in Hawaii and stuff. It's not like, well, back then, when people couldn't do anything, well, it's still going on. They're still doing the same shit. So, uh, <sighs> fuck. Um, but it, to me, you know, the solution is definitely to leave the cities. It's going and we're going to go and fight them now for them. It's like, what are we fighting for? These people who just want to go out and... We're going to fight. Yeah, if they come into my yard and start trying, well, I'll fight them. But I'm not going to run down to the Capitol and start, uh, you know. As soon as we abandon the cities, there's nothing left. When we leave and we go build our own, we don't need to have these cities. Who Who wants to live in apartments? Who wants to live stacked up on each other? I don't know any people who live in an apartment. I mean, I'm sure there's some apartment dwellers who are like, well, I don't want a yard. God, that would be work. Good, go live in a fucking commune place and go live someplace with a bunch of people so you have more people to help you do your work. But there's a lot of people who, like, for one thing, you don't have to mow your goddamn yard. Like, 
Where, where that ever came up, that's elitist bullshit right there. Oh, go out and put some grass and then mow your yard. And the whole thing that that was to show like, well, I don't need to grow my food. I'm better than that. So get back and grow your fucking food. Grow your food. You don't need to buy it from them. And, you know, we need to be spread out more. We need our own space. We need our own land. Not uh, fucking jam-packed up on everybody fighting for these goddamn... Uh, this was weird, too, because um, my ex went and got all these eggs. And he said they were all farm fresh. They were right off the farm. And he was having problems peeling them. So he asked me to go in and peel them. And so I went in and I was um, doing it. And um, and then, you know, they were all cooked. And I was, so I was making deviled eggs and potato salad. And so I was cutting them up and stuff. And it, they were weird, even though they were farm fresh. And there was still something weird with the yolk and stuff. There was weird shit. No doubt about it. And... Um, where some of the yolks where I was like, this is like plastic. This is weird. And um, then I just saw somebody who was cooking. They got Walmart eggs and they were cooking them. There's nothing real about those. I've got some eggs uh, that I just bought too. And every time that I make them, it's just like, it's just weird shit. Like all this food is plastic. It's not real. And what is even just weirder and weirder is because we're not real. Nothing's real. So how can we complain about not real food? Because we're not even real. It's all an illusion. And we think we need to eat it. So we eat this big fucking food. And I think that's part of the whole thing for us to start realizing. is like, it's fake. Like, it's fake. We're fake. It's fake. Everything's fucking fake. Do we really even need it? Our bodies keep telling us yes. Because even if I think, oh, well, I don't need to eat. My body will still say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. We need to eat something. And so, you know, there's uh, even knowing and realizing, like, you don't need food, but, you know, we're, we haven't ascended to that part apparently yet. And so I think that that is a part of the ascension, part of the, you know, this realizing, like, when all you've got is fake food to eat and your body keeps telling you it's hungry and then you go through the thing and realizing, you know, it's all been fake. The whole fucking thing. Oh, yeah. Because this was... Um, this guy, he did a video. He was, like, sitting over in a parking lot. And he might have gotten the Chick-fil-A, too. But he said it was 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting in a parking lot across from Chick-fil-A. And he said it was three lines deep. Three lines going at 10 in the morning to get a chicken sandwich. And so... And he said it was long. He said it the whole entire time he was there for an hour. It was just long ass three deep line. And um, so he's like, what in the hell? Like, is there some addictive in this shit? Like, this is weird. He was like weirding out. So we went to look up the ingredients. And the, he said the ingredients have like 42 or 48 ingredients or something. He said there were so many ingredients. So he started going through and reading. And it has all sorts of addictive chemicals in it. Tons of chemicals. And 40, uh, it was like 48 chemicals. I mean, it should be just chicken. It's got 48 chemicals in this shit. And so he's like, it's fucking addictive because they've got all these chemicals to make it addictive. So he, then he went and looked up Popeyes. And it had even more. It had like 52 or something. And so it was the same thing all these addictive chemicals in this chicken sandwich to get all these people to go get these chicken sandwiches all the time. And, and they're allowed to do this. They're allowed to put these addictive chemicals in things for people without people knowing. They just think, well, oh, I really like that sandwich. You no, know, you like the chemical. It's like as soon as you start realizing that they've also done that with kidney cells. <laughs> like You're addicted to kidney cell flavors. It's disgusting. Uh, so the... Um, and I bet you that there's some of that in those. Uh, he didn't go through the whole list. He said it was weird because then he went and he posted about it. And he said once he did, it was a whole thing. And um, I don't know, I think they took down his post and whatnot. But they um, now when you go on either place, on to Popeye's or on to Chick-fil-A, he said you can't find their ingredients. They took it down. Because he made such a big thing publicly about the ingredients. And now they've taken him off of the thing. Which that seems fucking illegal too. 
you know, that doesn't seem okay. But these penny burgers, all of a sudden, yeah, we're going to take our $10 burger and we're going to make it a penny. Like one minute they're charging you fucking $10 for something. I don't know how much, you know, and I don't even know what size burger it is that they're going to put out for a penny. But bet your ass it's got some kind of, you know, it's brought to you from Pfizer. <laughs> like it's a Pfizer representation of a sandwich. So yeah, I wouldn't eat that shit. I don't give a fuck. Um, I don't think, I, I think that there's so much stuff out there that has got so, I, to me, you got to go the most basic, the basic food. I, and I told this to my kids a long while ago um, because they were like, well, vegan, you got to go vegan and all this stuff. It's like, no, you got to go basic. You got to go back to basics and go fucking buy vegan food. That's got like a fucking ingredients list this is half the fucking label. That is, you don't want that shit. You want to go back and just go basic, basic vegetables, eggs, butter, you know, you got to get back to the basic shit. Even, you know, when making shit with flour, it's like, I'm sure they put shit in the flour. If I go through, if I could see good enough and you know, read all the ingredients, I'd probably drive myself crazy if I could see good enough to read all these ingredients. But yeah, I can't see good enough to read those and then look them up and read what that says. Like it's, and then, and then on top of it, even with my brain injury, then I'll start reading it and I'll, if I can think I've got, I, I can't remember the stuff, you know, to me, I've got to just basically, I know I'm eating poison. I mean, no, I'm eating shit, eat as little of the shit as possible and make sure I'm taking care of myself as I'm doing it, you know, with my health and stuff, add in, you know, herbs and detox stuff. Oh yeah. I took some of that, um, charcoal last night. Charcoal too is a good one, I guess, apparently, because it is like what I'm always saying, like about mucus and stuff is a carrier agent. And so the charcoal, when you eat that, is like a carrier agent in your body. So it gets the parasites that are dead to move out. So it gets them out of you. So I guess it's probably a good idea to do charcoal every once in a while. I don't know how often, I don't know, you'd have to figure it out for yourself, like once a week, once a month, but, um, and charcoal is so, so messy. I just made more of my eyebrow stuff the other day because it was getting so dried out. And so I've already got it made. It's just an little thing, but I have to put it into the mascara thing. But, oh my God, it's so goopy at first. Oh my God, it comes out with like groucho eyebrows every time is they're so dark. So I put it on before I go to bed. So it wipes off mostly. So it just is like sticks to, I don't know, I'm trying to just stick it to the gray or white eyebrows, the eyebrows that are turning white. Like my hair It's weird too, is, um, how one side, uh, is going. It's so weird how we have these two sides of ourselves. And there is so much about getting into balance. And this is weird too. And I'm sure, you know, some people would think like, okay, that's, that makes no sense. But I swear to God, my face looked different before. It, it, there was like, when they say like you have these two sides, it, to me, it was more distinct. There was like two totally different. And maybe it looks totally different on each side of my face still to some people, but to me, it doesn't. To me, I feel like my face is going into, like looking the same on both sides by um, this healing and balancing myself. I, that's why I say like you're, the way you look represents you. And not your, it, it represents you in a different way than what you think. And so it's showing you like that you're off center, you're out of balance and stuff. It's always showing you and telling you and, and what you need to work on and stuff. So anyways, through my healing, I have definitely noticed that my face is becoming more, um, the same on both sides. So I don't know. I don't, I mean, to me, I, oh, now I used to be. 
um, before, I could always see it was so different. Like I could, you know, each eyebrow is different, each thing. But when I look at it, I don't just see the two differences. I look at it as just like they're kind of just the same now. So I don't know, that kind of trips me out. But I feel like that that is, there's things in your physicality that will heal as you emotionally heal. So as you're healing, you will begin to represent the healing that you're doing. So, and I think that will be like, I'm telling you, those fucking bugs are in my eyes all the goddamn time. They're fucking attacking my eyes and my fucking nose. And I keep sneezing and sneezing. They start crawling around in my goddamn face. Um, and I'm, I just know that there's some sort of like little fucking Neo bots or something. I, that's what I think. I don't think that they are like regular parasites because they seem to like hone in. It's not like they just get on you. It's like you feel it get on you and then you feel it like, oh, got to get over here and get in the eyeball. Or you feel it go and you feel it like it's weird. So I think that they are something and, um, and they move around. And I think that is the, the floater things that are in my eyes. I think that those are in there, these little things. And fuck, I don't know when they turn on the zombie apocalypse thing. Uh, are these things going to start going crazy in my eyes? Am I not going to be able to see or something? Like, fuck, I don't know what we have to expect what is ahead. Like, um, but there's sure is a lot of people who think it's about to go down. Um, with the 19th, the 18th. And all this stuff from the 22nd to the 23rd. I just hope so. I just hope some stuff just starts going. Oh, my God. It will make people feel so much better, too. The people who are, you know, holding on, who just want to just give up, who are just so burnt out. Having something go that will just give people more of like, okay, okay, the money crash, we can keep going. We got, we got this. We can keep going. The government's next. The government's going to go down. All these fucking people who go on here and treat us like the worst stupid idiots. They're going to go down. The tables are going to turn. They look like stupid idiots. And, you know, they it's this smug condescending, like uh, these triggers, you know, like look at how they treat us. But it's all, the tables are going to turn. You know, they're all going to go down. So we just have to, but I, I just feel like, that people will feel a lot more motivated, like if something, but the people who don't know any, you know, uh, these people who want to hold on to this world, want to hold on to this money, want to hold on to all this shit, they're going to be, um, you know, devastated. They're going to be angry and mad, and there's going to be, a, it's going to be emotional. But for the people who are just like, oh my God, how long is this going to go on? Like me. <laughs> I know there's other people like me. I know there's a lot of people who are just like, well, you know, I want to believe. I want to believe this money thing. I want to believe this government thing. You know, they want it. So if something, just any little, little thing will start going. Because, like, I can see where it's all headed. I can see, like, oh yeah, this is playing out for sure. This is keep going. But it's just the way it's so slow. And to me, it maybe just feels so slow just because, you know, I live here in this cabin in the woods with my dog and I stay to myself. So maybe that is why it just seems like redundantly every day just like drags like, oh my God, another day. I think today I'm going to just try and get into my... Uh, crocheting and finish this one hat. My granddaughter really liked it when she saw it. So I really want to finish it before I go back to babysit, which is a couple weeks. I can finish it probably in an hour. It would be done. But and my one daughter was reminding me I was going to paint her some pictures for her new place. And I was like, oh yeah, I got to do that. And it, it just is like, I'm still in that. Like I just hit into these things where it's like, oh my God, it's hard to just it just feels like depleted, like, like, I, I just don't want to do anything. Like everything seems like such a chore. 
But then I get up and do so. Like last night, I got up and made an apple pie. So I'm doing stuff all the time. I'm constantly doing shit. But it is like, ah. Uh, just, uh, I don't know. I'll be so glad when shit starts going. Oh, and so yesterday I did catch the, the thing. Because I took a, a screenshot. And so it was um, one on my following. It was 1.08, which was weird because it was, like I had said, it, it, it before it was one and it was just one. And then it took a long time and then it went to 1.1 and then it was at 1.1 for a long time. And then it went to 1.2. And so it was doing that, but it was going kind of slow, but it seemed to kind of match for how many views and stuff. It seemed like it, um, it seemed like it was going kind of fast, I guess. I, I don't know. It's so hard because like you can get hundreds of followers in one day. So, um, you know, when it, when it's going really fast and then all of a sudden it just stops, <clears throat> but it seemed like it was still going. And so it was going up, but it was going up by these, like, like it would say that number for a long time and then it would go to the next one. So it kept being like 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1 1.6, and it got 1.8. And so um, then it went to the next day, it was all of a sudden 1.08. I was like, well, when the hell did they do that? How, when did they start doing it like that? That doesn't make any sense. And I was so confused. And then I kept thinking, like, was I reading it wrong the whole time? And I kept thinking of all these different things. And I was like, no, I'm sure. And then um, then yesterday it started doing something weird again. And so then it switched from 1.08 to 1.1. And so I got a screenshot of that. I was like, okay, so now it's back to 1.1. So what the hell are they doing now? Now there's the two again. It's not three numbers. It's two how it was before, how it's always been. And then um, later in the evening, I went on and looked again. I was just like, well, let's see what's going on. And now it is 1.11. So it jumped from 1.1. 1 .1. It's just jumping all over. I, I don't even know what the hell they're doing. But now they've got it 1.11. So I don't even know what's... I don't even know how many people really follow me. I have no idea. I don't... I have no idea what they're even doing with my, I, I don't know. I, I guess, you know, as long as the videos stay there and people get a hear, you know, I mean, that was the whole thing of starting this was so people get it here and get these other perspectives and then share, you know, my guidance and stuff. Plus my guides, they were the ones putting so much pressure on me. They, you know, were like even turned my lights on while I was in bed and tell me, get up and go video. And so, you know, that's what got me all started on it. And it was very nerve wracking in the beginning, you know, it was uh, hard to do. Now I feel so much more comfortable and I could get comfortable doing the live, but really in me 23, it seems like you're the only person who wants me to go live. <laughs> like Nobody really seems to be, you know, it doesn't make any difference to other people. Um, I don't know, you know, I'm sure that is something weird with why sometimes the, the, they won't let it download. Like you go to watch it and it'll just keep saying it's downloading, it's downloading, it's downloading. Uh, it's got to be something weird with whatever they do to my account, which, fuck, I have no idea. I've got no control. I've not had any control over it since all the way back when Twitter you know, when I first started seeing about censorship, I was seeing about it in 2020. I started being censored as soon. The moment you say something that is off the narrative publicly, it's like, fuck, I hear you. <laughs> Big brother knows you're speaking. I'm like not even shitting you for the fucking secret service to show up at my house. That still just weirds me out. And, uh, you know, so I know, I know I'm being watched. I mean, I knew I was being watched. Like, I knew I was being watched after Bush when that white van would sit out in front of my house and I would openly talk about how I wanted to go kill that son of a bitch. I was like, fuck, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I thought he was the worst. I thought he was such a garbage. Uh, but my, Obama did trick me. Like, 
they do go go teach them how to just be so debonair and suave and then you know the politicians are just so charming they try all these different things and with him they tried the, the charming thing like he's so suave and debonair but he's really not like that at all he's such a fake such a phony i just saw this was a funny twitter tweet because it was uh, i think it was from 2019 too that's the thing about trump he's a crack up but it was um michelle was did some post and said uh, trump is the worst he's the worst president ever and um so he went back and he answered her and he said hey mike how about we have a basketball game later and bring Obama. We need a cheerleader. <laughs> he was always, as a thing, is like these people. That's what I tried to tell my kids too. When I started saying that they were lying about him, you know, when I started recognizing that the news was lying about him, and I started telling people, and they all thought I was crazy. I suddenly became a racist. I was crazy. All this stuff. And but I have told him so many times. He's so funny. Like if you guys would see. Uh, oh, oh my god you are so crazy there is nothing funny about that weirdo crazy per you know all stuff that people think about him it's like oh he's super funny um you know because that's the kind of shit like that we would want to say you know and he he does it and so anyways i think i think a lot of a lot of people are going to feel bad about the, their attitude towards other people even their attitude towards some family members and stuff like when the tables turn and everything turns around and they realize like fuck god all the rude shit i said to them all the arrogant all the man because some people have said some rude ass shit and you know it's gonna be them the people who said it they're the ones who are going to have the hardest time getting over it like, the people who it was said to uh, are going to be vindication. Like, fuck. You know, but you're going to see that people are going to see a lot of people struggle with what they put out in the world. When they put out, how their attitude, how they reacted, how they acted, they're going to have a hard time with that. That's why I'm constantly saying be mindful of your attitude, of how you act, what you're putting out in the world. Be very mindful because that's the stuff that is the hardest stuff to get over. And mark my words, watch and see, watch and see with your family members and stuff. The the feeling tricked, feeling like somebody lied to them and they didn't see it, they were tricked, and just their own shitty attitude is going to be the hardest things for people to get over. And it's going to bring up so much more stuff. It's going to bring up so much more trauma and stuff. That's where they've got to get down to is, um, you know, figuring out where their biases come from, why they were being tricked, how they were being misled. you got to go in to yourself deeper and see. you got to be honest with yourself so you can see how you were tricked, so you can heal those parts of yourself. That's why it's there. That's why the things happen. That's why your soul put yourself through it so you could heal it. So... But your soul is watching. Your soul is watching. So it's going to watch how it reacts. It watches how it feels. It watches what it does with those feelings. So it's not like, you know, we, you can do anything wrong. All it is is your soul is watching itself. It's experiencing itself. It's understanding itself. It's witnessing itself. So there's nothing that you can do wrong, even if you you know, died and uh, it would still be, you have your life review. You still have this, you know, you go in and there's a whole thing. I, your life is so much different, like, than what people think. It's just way different. And uh, to me, just, you know, go into the self-help book section. Start trying to figure out, you know, start with your diagnoses. You know, like for me with the gaslighting book, like I knew I was being gaslit, but, you know, I had to understand what the whole thing was. And then when you go in and you read, then you can see your part. If you're reading a self-help book and it's not giving you where you can figure out your part, read another one. 
like all these different authors will explain things differently. So just read a different one and see. And a lot of times I love the books that have case studies. Case studies are really good because then you can like recognize certain things, recognize patterns and stuff. So I like the case study ones, but just go in and read different things. Like if you, whatever your diagnoses and, um, it, it, but it does, with the diagnoses, you know, you'll have some parts that you're like and some parts you aren't really trying to hone in, focus on your behaviors. The behaviors that you do that are toxic to you. Because those are the ones you want to change. Don't lump. The, that's the thing is they want to just constantly lump us into these, you know, diagnoses. You know, it covers all these people. So, um, go in and try and find your certain behaviors. And then try and figure out, like, the, it, there's a role you're playing. And so, when you can figure out your role. And it can be different with different people. Because you can play the good guy and the bad guy. And so, you know, you could be a manipulative, uh, judgmental cunt to your kid. And then to your husband, you're a doormat. So you, you have to go in and figure out your behaviors, your roles, and your patterns so that you can break them. But when you go in and you read those self-help books and stuff, it should help you to see yours. Like, to me, it was clear on the gaslighting one. As, uh, it was long, if you're firm in what you believe and what you see, then, yeah, you're not going to let somebody else tell you what the truth is. There's people who, somebody starts trying to tell them, they'll just, like, you know, walk away. But then there's people pleasers who will try and, you know, conform and make the other person happy, but you lose yourself doing that. And it just becomes toxic. This person becomes worse and worse and worse. And you become less and less and less. So you have to pull yourself into your truth, your balance. You have to be honest about yourself. You can't just please other people. But you have to go out and find your different things. Because there's other patterns too. People are very manipulative to try and get what they want, what they need. They think that they have to manipulate to get it. You have to find those patterns in yourself. You have to see when you're triggered, what triggers you. And so self-help book section is big. You should be able to find books that will help you read. You don't need to go spend all this money at counselors. There's tons and tons of books out there. And, you know, if you don't know how to read, there's audio books. They'll, they'll read it to you. And, you know, if you don't have a tape, I think you might have to go on. I think... You know, if you don't, I like, there's got to be some way. I mean, just there's any, any problem you find, just go and try and figure out a solution and go to the thrift store. Find, thrift stores have a million books. I bet you can find self-help books in thrift stores. And uh, I bet you can find a lot of them. So anywhere you can get any kind of books to just get your mind to start thinking in a healthier way. You know, even if you read one, it's like, oh, this has nothing to do with me. But, you know, I can see it. And you may be, you know, you're going to help somebody else because now somebody's going to do something and it's going to be right in front of you. And going to be like, oh, I just read about that. You know, and you can help them to figure out their own patterns and how to break their own patterns because everybody's frustrated. Everybody's frustrated and can't figure out, like, why do I have such toxic relationships? What's wrong with me? You know? But you have to just figure out, like, well, I want to be healthier. I want to have healthier relationships. What is the part I play? What is the part that I can do something about? And um, so all the self-help books. And then when you're trying to understand this fit, this spiritual side of yourself, if this is all new to you, and, you know, don't just listen to these fucking people who just all of a sudden woke up and became the spiritual experts. You know, they haven't studied about spirituality. They just all of a sudden woke up and think they're the experts. And so don't just go and everything that they say, you know, well, you can't drink, you can't have, uh, you can't have alcohol, you can't have food, you can't have all their yeah, can'ts. That's not the God I know. Uh, the God I know is about, you know, it, it, it would be more of like, you know, God, having a party, opening up his home, and then you walking around and say, oh, well, 
no, can't have that, can't have that. Like, I mean, he wants you to have it all. He wants you to get a try at everything. He wants you to experience the whole thing. He doesn't want you to hold back. And But you've got to have control over your impulses. Like, you've got to sit, you know, like you don't just, uh, you have an impulse. That means automatically you have to go do that. No, you have to sit and think about it. Well, should I do that? Is that a good idea? Would that be a smart thing? Or it's probably just one of those um, attachments sitting there trying to get you to do something dysfunctional. So you got to take time to sit and listen to it. But you, um, and then tell it to shut the fuck up. That you don't need to hear it. Go away. You start recognizing that voice of dysfunction and start getting it rid of it. But there's so many books about spirituality, mysticism, different religions, different, um, all the thing about near-death experiences, reincarnation. There's so much that you can go out and start exploring spirituality. You go out to explore what you're interested in. That's the spiritual journey is going and fi figuring you out. You figure you out, no matter what the distractions are. Your spiritual journey is your journey to self. There isn't, you know, we don't all have to be at the same place. We don't all go into the same place. We're all going to our own best self. You're going towards you. So um, you don't want all these other people controlling it. Figuring out like if oh, you should never drink. Well, then... All of your opportunity to figure out balance in that experience is, you know, you didn't even do it. You didn't even try it. You didn't even experience it because somebody told you you're not allowed to do that. So these, there's so much holding you back. And then you got to go in and you got to think, well, what am I being held back by? Am I a, a bad per <coughs> Am I a bad person? If I go have, if I go down and have a beer with my friends, does that make me a bad person? Am I not spiritual then? I see that is your journey to self. That is for you to figure out. But you can't have all of these rules holding you back. It is you to figure you out. It's you to go through the journey, through the experience. It isn't about, you know, just doing what you're told and trying to please others. And so, anyways, you know, that's the way I see it. You know, I've always looked at life like that. Like, I'm here to experience life. I'm here to feel it. I'm here to, you know, uh, grab it by the balls. I'm not going to just sit back. Like, and I don't fear death. And I also have the understanding that you don't have control. Doesn't matter. You don't have control. If, if you're going to go jump out of an airplane, then you're not going to die unless you're meant to die. If you were meant to die, then you're going to die. That was, that was the way it was going to go. You were out the game. That was the way you were taken out. That was it. But it's not going to happen just because, just because it is going, it's going to happen because it's supposed to happen. And when something is supposed to happen, it can happen in the most strangest ways. Just like how the most strangest things can happen and people can survive. It's the same thing. Because what's supposed to happen is going to happen. What's not supposed to happen is not going to happen. And anything in between can just be miracles. So, there's so many people that just hold themselves back. Just, you know, out of fear. Just scared. Don't want to live and experience because something may happen. You may get sick. You may die and all that stuff. But that is just holding yourself back from the real experience because you can't how how are you living if you're always fearing death every single thing if you're like well i'd like to do that but what if i die well, i'd like to do that but that could kill me like and you know i know that uh alcohol is a big one you know and i do know that it does it's like you you drink a bunch and then you kind of, your soul gets, uh, it's kind of like, 
is it like drowsy or something? And then these other ones can get louder. So it's like this dark entity, these dark energies um, kind of like they can kind of overtake you. That is like how people do like crazy shit and they'll be like, well, I was drunk. <coughs> so it is um <coughs> so it is like um but it's like that they aren't listening to themselves it's like they quiet themselves and then they hear the darker energy or something um but you know i mean there's a lot of problems if you drink too much. You have a lot of problems with relationships. You have a lot of problems with your physical body. Like there's a lot of things that people have to learn for themselves. You know, you, everybody has to learn their own balance, their own everything. And if you're somebody who doesn't ever drink, I'm not saying, well, you better get out there and drink because you haven't done it right unless you've tried it for yourself. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that these people who come in and tell you the rules and then you don't go do something because somebody tells you not to do it. Don't, you don't, you're not supposed to just follow everybody's rules. You're supposed to follow your own. So if, yeah, if you feel like, well, I'm not going to drink. I have no desire to drink. I don't want to ever drink. I've never felt like I needed a drink. Well, you probably learned that in another life and you don't need to learn anything about drinking. It's all part of your DNA. It's part of you. So it's not something that you need to think about. and um, But it's just that these people that just keep coming in with these rules on spiritual. You know, you can't eat, you can't eat meat. Like, to tell people that they can't. So every single person who eats meat, who wants to be spiritual, well, you don't count. <laughs> no, you, you can eat meat and be spiritual. You can drink alcohol and be spiritual. You are the one who decides. You, it's your spirit. It's how connected your spirit is to the spiritual world, to where your spirit connects. That is your connection. It, it has nothing to do with anybody else. And so nobody else should be making your rules. Nobody else should be telling you how to live. Your guidance inside of you will tell you how to live. Not the people outside of you. The people outside of you can give you feedback, but you don't need to hang your hat on their feedback. It's just feedback. It's, you know, it's like, you know, for my daughter to call, oh, tell me I'm not a good listener. You know, that's feedback. I don't have to change if I don't want to change. If, I, you know, hearing it enough, then it makes me think more of like, okay, I, when someone's talking, I really focus on what they're saying. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to stay quiet. And I'm not always good at it. <laughs> I interrupt all the time. I've always got something to say. But I, you know, I'm being more mindful. But I'm not doing it to try and, you know, uh, make somebody like me or something. I'm doing it because, like, I decided for myself, well, you know, I do want to listen better. If I'm not a good listener, I don't want to be somebody who's just always needs to be talking, even though I do prefer talking. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, we all have our preferences. Some people prefer listening. You know, I prefer talking, but I will listen. It's just challenging. But uh, sometimes also you have to tell me like, okay, stop talking and just listen for a minute because you just keep talking. And then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll stop. I will do, I will stop. I won't get mad. And I will, because I do know, I do talk a lot. Like, obviously, I can talk and talk and talk. And so, anyways, but I'm going to stop talking now. And I'm going to just see how this day goes. Who knows? You know, maybe I'll come back and talk later this afternoon. Maybe I'll just go live and just talk for a minute. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, to me, it feels weird. Like, even going and seeing what's going on and stuff, it just seems, everything seems weird. And then this big storm coming, I just fucking hope, like, whatever they're going to fucking do, I hope this is finally the thing where it is, um, the money crashes. I just feel like, oh, the money would just crash. Well, that would take the stress off of me over the house thing. <laughs> then I wouldn't have to worry about that in court and stuff. Or, you know, 
oh, what are they going to do next? Is someone going to pull up and ask if they can come in and look around? <laughs> what are these people? Oh, they're so stupid. This whole system. They think they can just come in and take shit away from us. I'll tell you, I will fight, you know, if this is going to drag out. Because as far as I'm concerned, I have got homesteading rights. There's a whole thing about that uh, they can't not give you the money and then tell you to pay them. It's all their wording. It's all of it's just such a scam. And then that um, MK Christensen or whatever that guy, that judge, who said that it's all illegal that we don't have to pay any debt anymore, that it's illegal. And he's the postmaster judge or something. He's the judge of her. And so I was thinking there was a whole thing when the government was going down, when 2020, no, it was 2019. No, it was it 2020. Fuck, I don't know. When Trump was, um, you know, bankrupting them and doing all of that stuff. There was a whole thing, as I saw this on Charlie Ward's show, is that there was this um, thing with the postmaster. It's kind of like the sheriff and the postmaster aren't the same, under the same governing influence. Like, they weren't under the corporation. Like, they're separate. Like, the postmaster judge would be different than, like, the, the judges that they placed. Like, it's under a different jurisdiction or something. You could look it up and stuff, but and I can't explain it really well. But there was a whole thing, and they were uh, talking all about this stuff with the postmaster and the blockchain. And uh, there was this whole thing about it. And um, But so for that judge to say he's the judge for the postmaster or something, the something with postmaster and judge and stuff. I was like, oh, so this would be like the real, a real judge, like a real, like the sheriff is a real over like these other police and stuff. You can look up about it. Like I, I, I saw about this back in 20, when I first started um, learning about some of this stuff. So I saw about it a while ago. I haven't heard anybody talking so much about but now that i've said this i'll probably see a whole bunch of videos it's weird i'll say something and then it'll be like all these videos all of a sudden i'll see of it so uh, to me it always seems like i'll talk about something and then they will bring me confirmation they'll just start bringing me videos that are confirmation because i don't see them beforehand i'll see it up here and they'll show me and they'll put things together but yeah i kind of feel like that there was something to that for that guy to say, you know, he's the judge of the postmaster or whatever it is, and that we're all released from debt and stuff. So I don't know. We just got to keep seeing how this shit plays out. So hopefully we hurry up and get free from debt. <laughs> it's going to be so nice for, even though I haven't been paying it, just for it to just be set. Just in my conversations, when I keep telling people, people are stressed out about money. We well, don't have to pay it. <sighs> they get it. It's like, well, you don't. Well, yes, I do. Oh, yeah. I do want to say this, too. Because my one daughter, who was playing this other big trip, she was playing this trip to Cyprus. And it was right after I had just seen a video that said, part of the thing you're going to start seeing with uh, credit cards and the money failing is you're going to start seeing charges canceled. <clears throat> things won't come, things that are on credit and stuff, uh, you're going to start seeing problems with that, which I had told my kids a while ago. I said, I bet you're going to start seeing problems with your credit cards. There's going to start being things won't get paid or it won't, the charge won't go through. Something will start happening. So anyway, she got these tickets to Cyprus like a week or two ago. And then when we were on the weekend thing, she was really disappointed because they had canceled it. The credit card had canceled. She went through all this stuff trying to uh, get it and the airlines and all that stuff. And uh, nope, it was gone. There's nothing. So I was like, oh, well, that's a good sign then. Because the credit cards were going to start canceling things. And so that would be a big one, buying airplane tickets. 
So, I don't know, just take notice if your things are getting canceled and stuff, I would think that's a sign of the the collapse, the financial collapse. So, anyways, to me, that felt like a good sign. So, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I don't know how they dragged this shit out so long. I just can't believe I thought this was going to go in 2020. Like, when I say this is drug out a long time, I'm not even fucking kidding. Like, I thought this shit was going to go down in 2020. I thought January 20, uh, when, at that inauguration, I thought they were going to zoom in, and make a rest. Like, uh, but I guess, yeah, that wouldn't have woke people up. They have to see it play out. They have to see how bad these people are. And, <laughs> and then you see the media, it, all of them. Like, well, I think the media now is turned on Joe with the politicians. They're still like... <laughs> Except for Fetterman, I mean, that guy, but uh, and that's not even a real part. The, the whole thing is just, it's a charade. It's just a big old charade. It's a big old fucking joke. It's ridiculous. So, anyways, I will um, talk to you later. Bye.